are scared to death. The most scared I've ever been in my life. You are about to see real people. What the hell is going on here? Reliving horrifying paranormal encounters for the first time. I know without a shadow of a doubt that that was a ghost. When multiple spirits haunt the same home. Fear, instant fear. I buried this for nearly 30 years. Be prepared to be afraid. Paranormal Survivor 3, Story 23, Debbie's Dark and Home. Interview with Debbie, Arking. We moved in here in 2003. First time I seen it, something drew me to it. Shortly after moving in with her husband, Kevin, and daughter, Celeste, Debbie began to feel there was something not right about the house. I had been unpacking boxes and came downstairs for a break. I was sitting at my dining room table, and all of a sudden, every door upstairs just opened and closed on their own over and over again. So I ran upstairs to make sure there wasn't anything there or I hadn't left the windows all open. And that was when I realized there was activity here. It wasn't just Debbie who experienced confusing and frightening activity. So I saw My daughter Celeste started hearing the voices up in the attic. Children hollering, Mama, let us out. Mama, please let us out. She said that they were crying, they were screaming. So all she could hear was children that were very upset, wanting out bad, and as if their mother had locked them in there. Oh, she was very scared. She told me she'd heard it for at least two or three months before she decided to just move out. Soon after her daughter left, Debbie's granddaughter, Keisha, came to live with her. I acquired custody of my oldest granddaughter. And within three months of her being here, I would go into her bedroom, and she would be sitting in the corner, just all in a ball, she would point towards her closet and tell me that she could see the man. She described seeing a man holding cutting shears. She told me the man in the corner was going to burn our house down and kill us all. It was pretty upsetting. There's something bad in this room. If Debbie thought things were bad then, they were about to get a whole lot worse. Kevin worked evenings back then, so I had went to bed, and for some reason, I hadn't dozed off yet. Debbie thought she heard Kevin return from work, but she was in for a terrible shock. I could feel somebody give me a kiss on the forehead and say, I love you. And it sounded like Kevin. I thought, oh, he's home early. I love you. When I turned over, though, where the face should have been, the eyes, there were no eyes. It was just white lights. <laughs> it had exactly my husband's work shirt on. It was his face, everything, haircut, hair color. It was his, his voice, everything but his eyes. There were no eyes. It was unlike anything I've ever seen. I was froze until it disappeared. 
and it just vanished into thin air. I was very, very scared. I don't think I've ever been that scared in my life. I still get upset when I think about it to this day. A doppelganger is an astral projection of you. So it is, in fact, a twin of you, but just in a different form. Sometimes um, a doppelganger actually is there to warn the individual about impending doom or something that's going to happen that sometimes is very unpleasant. Though scared, Debbie tried to put the incidents behind her. But there were more to come. I was cleaning Keisha's room. And I seen a little girl walk past the doorway. Well, then the next thing I know, there's no light at all. The room's just dark. And it scared me so bad, I was yelling and screaming. That was the scariest I'd ever been, because I wasn't sure what was going to happen next. I was, didn't know if that was going to be my last day here or what. She had long, brown, wavy hair, the white, creamy color, like the old nightgown style they would have worn in the 1800s. She was probably between seven, eight years old of age. Things took a dangerous turn when the spirits became physical. Keisha was in front of her mirror in her bedroom, and we were just talking back and forth. She was combing her hair. And I watched her get picked up off the ground and thrown over her bed. I could not have lifted her up like that and threw her that far. I ran into her room to make sure she was OK, and the eyes on the picture were glowing red. When Debbie moved into this unassuming home, she had no idea she would be swarmed by spirits and paranormal activity. I ran into her room to make sure she was OK, and the eyes on the picture were glowing red. It seemed like a warning that more spirits were about to manifest. She said, he's in the picture, Grandma. Get him out. She was screaming about the picture on the wall, having demon eyes. I didn't know what to do. We both left the house. We were terrified. I don't know what picked her up and threw her. I wasn't sure if it was the same guy that had threatened to kill us all or who it was, but it was getting violent then. Oh, sorry. I would rather die than lose one of my grandchildren or my children. And that just, it just terrified me. I, I didn't want anything to happen to her. She's, she's my own. <laughs> Sometimes multiple spirits will come into a home for, for a number of different reasons. Sometimes there might be a portal that's opened that will bring in multiple spirits. Sometimes there's a very strong entity or energy that is attracting other spirits and bringing them in. Fearing for Keisha's safety, Debbie sent her to a friend's and called in paranormal investigators Greg Fields and Mickey Garrison. Thank God you're here. Are here. Come in. Come in. Come in. Oh my God. Thank you. When we first arrived at the house, we were heavy chested. It's like hard to breathe. And like we, we had that feeling that we weren't welcome here at all. It was like somebody was trying to push you out. Me and my investigator, Mickey, we went upstairs.
And I had my cell phone, I was recording, and I just sat it down. I feel somebody poke me in the back right here, just like a little finger. That's when we got the little girl saying, Mom, Mama, Mom. And you can tell it's a little girl. She was uh, scared. Mom. Usually when I hear that, I just start asking more questions. Who are you? Where's your mom? Why are you here? The little girl goes, you need to get out. Get out. Get out. She tried to warn us to get us out so nobody gets hurt. I really do think she's here to protect. For her to come through and, you know, you need to get out kind of puts a chill through you. Then a different, darker voice spoke out. We did have one male come through. It was like a deep growl almost. It was kind of almost like a dog growl. You can tell that it was demonic. Fearing a stronger demonic spirit was present, Greg decided to cleanse the house immediately. We use uh, salt and sage and some white candles to do the cleansing of the homes. As you're blessing a home, you're saying a prayer. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us from the wickedness and scorns of evil. Eliminate this demon, save this soul. Greg and Mickey thought they'd removed the evil entity. I was sitting here in my dining room. But the spirits in the house were stronger than they had imagined. Something just literally hit me hard in the chest. Mickey? And I don't know what it was or why, but it, then it made me, I felt sick to my stomach. And I was doubled over, and I'd never had anything hit me like that before. Oh, God. This is the most active home I've ever been in. We don't believe that they're completely gone. I think cleansing the house helped a little. I feel that there's a little girl still here. And I know that there's a man still here. The little girl's protective, but the dark one, in my opinion, it could be demonic. I just grabbed my car keys to my cell phone and headed out, knowing that whatever that is, is still in this house, still terrifies me. Whether the spirits were protective or not, Debbie couldn't take the cacophony any longer and is now desperately looking for a new home so she can move out. Sometimes multiple spirits are bound by a location, while others are bound by a horrific event, an event those spirits might want to repeat with the living. Paranormal Survivor 3, Story 25, Kelly's Haunting, Interview with Kelly, Marking. We bought our first home in November of 2004. We were really excited to move into our house, and we had so much to look forward to. Yes. Soon after moving in, unusual and troubling things started to occur. You would start to hear certain noises and like different creaks. 
I really honestly thought at first it was just a house. This is just something I need to get used to. Everything's so new to us at that time that it was just, just brush it off, not a big deal. In her wildest dreams, Kelly couldn't have expected what was about to occur. When I looked up, I had seen this figure of a gentleman standing there. After moving into their first home, Kelly and Nathan soon realized they weren't alone. When I looked up, I had seen this figure of a gentleman standing there. <laughs> and he has this like brim of his hat that you could tell the details of and He's looking at me, and I'm looking at him. It felt like our eyes were locked, and I was just in shock. There was something here that should not be here. He then turned and walked through the doorway and disappeared. At this point, we were not feeling very safe in the home. The shadow man was not the only thing that we had seen in the house. One particular night, I was laying down and I felt like something was telling me to open my eyes. stood a little girl that had like blonde, long, straight hair with a white um, nightgown, you know, like from the 1900s. Nathan, wake up! Nathan! So I instantly turn over in the bed and kind of like elbow him as hard as I could to get him awake, like, Nathan! Wake up! When I turned and looked at her, her face was this close to my face, and I <laughs> screamed. She was looking me dead in the eye. Nathan, wake up! She was then gone. I know without a shadow of a doubt that that was a ghost and that you're not supposed to be in my home. That was when I was more scared than ever. As scared as she was, Kelly couldn't help but feel that the little girl was trying to tell her something, warn her, especially after Kelly's daughter, Natalie, was born. Each evening when Nathan would leave to go to work, it kind of became a routine for me to gather all the things that I think that I would need, and we would literally bunker down into our master suite. I was just terrified to be in here by myself. Each night felt like forever. One particular night, I was watching a show and I decided to look up into the mirror when I heard those sounds. And when I looked into that mirror, there was the little girl. I didn't know what to do with myself because I didn't know what to do. Terrified, Kelly couldn't understand what the spirits wanted with them. And with nowhere else to go, she and Nathan stayed in the house. But things took an even darker turn when their son Elijah was born. One particular night, he was just at that point of crying where it was like a, a high pitched scream. And he was consistently doing this for several hours. You try to do everything that you can to figure out what the problem is. I just couldn't take it anymore. 
I went outside and I took the baby monitor with me. I heard a male voice come over the monitor. What it said was, go to sleep, boy, in this deep voice that was stern. Go to sleep, boy. It terrified me so bad that I didn't know if I even wanted to go back into the house. Go to sleep, boy. But then my maternal instinct kicks in and it's like, no, you have to go into the house because your child's in there with whatever thing this is. Was this something that was maybe demonic because the way that it sounded was so creepy. When I ran into his room, he was laying there quiet as can be. I was looking around the room to try and figure out what in the world was in there. <sighs> Nothing had ever happened. Everything was back to normal. Next, the attention started to focus on Kelly's daughter. Natalie was terrified. Okay, good night. Mwah. Sleep tight, okay? She was saying, Mom, Mom, there's a scary man in my closet. She started to tell me that he had like an old T-shirt on and really dirty jeans and that the boots that he was wearing had like blood all over the tops of the boots. Kelly decided to endure the haunting of their family home. She never imagined the spirits would target her daughter. She was saying, Mom, Mom, there's a scary man in my closet. She started to tell me that he had like an old T-shirt on and really dirty jeans and that the boots that he was wearing had like blood all over the tops of the boots. Mom, mommy! And what's wrong? Are you okay? You okay? I had never seen her this scared before. The closet door in there had opened by itself. Now this was a closet door that had like, oh, you have to unlatch it and Natalie is too little to have even gotten up on a stool and still be able to reach it. Kelly wondered if the spirit of the little girl was warning them about a darker entity. After that had happened, that both my son and my daughter slept in my bed with me. And so here we were again, bunkered down in the master bedroom. The next day, Kelly investigated who or what could have opened the closet. I noticed that the closet door is yet again opened, and I shut it, and I make sure it's latched. OK, now I know without a shadow of a doubt, this closet is closed. I heard this latching sound, like, and that gets my attention, and I turn my head towards it, and sure enough, this closet door had unlatched itself and opened. That terrified me. I go and I slam it shut this time, and at that point, like, I'm starting to get so afraid and scared at this time, I don't know if it's gonna fling me back, like, if it's gonna open again while I'm doing this. I 
felt like there was something maybe pushing back on the door to try and open it, and I was just taking whatever I could in my power to help keep this door shut. I had no idea what was on the other side of that closet. I have no way of knowing what it is capable of. I started to reach out to Jesus. So I was hollering for it to go away. In the name of Jesus, get out of this house. And I said that several times before I felt like it had gave up and that I could like let go. At breaking point, Kelly and Nathan finally called in paranormal investigator Brendan Shea. He began by researching the history of the house. It's important when you start to investigate a location that you kind of want to get a sense of what was going on in this area. In the area where Kelly and Nathan's house was, there was an infamous murder that happened where a man murdered his mother and had seven kids and he murdered all of them. person, such as a murderer, will absolutely be a threat in a person's home because they are in death what they were in life. The spirit of the victim may want to protect the homeowner because they couldn't protect themselves, and they may be determined that this person doesn't hurt anyone else. Brendan believed the negative spirit of the murderer might be what was terrorizing Kelly and her family. In the second floor, I got heart palpitations and immediately goosebumps, and my hair on the back of my neck stood up. <laughs> the feelings told me that this was definitely a room that we needed to check out, because a lot of the claims came from this room. And now I'm getting a sense that there was somebody watching. Somebody watches all the time. We had digital voice recorders that we asked questions to try to get EVPs. Who are you? Why do you watch this family? Who are you? What do you want with this family? Why are you watching them? We were sitting there asking questions and we heard somebody whistle at us. We have to pray. It got serious real quick. Um, the environment changed. It felt like so thick. I don't know how else to really explain it. My heart started racing, and I was told to get out by something in there. Just a deep voice that said, get out. You could feel that something was in here that didn't want to leave. I just started saying the prayer like really loud and trying to let this thing know I want my house back. Our father, who are you Frightened for their lives, Kelly and Nathan brought in paranormal investigator Brendan Shea to rid their home of a powerful, evil spirit. Out. 
I just started saying the prayer like really loud and trying to let this thing know I want my house back. Our Father, who art in heaven. That moment was just very intense. I was having like shortness of breath. I was willing to do whatever to get it out. Back, beast! Back! The energy changed, that it felt different in that room, and you could tell that it left. The environment had felt lighter and just so much easier and like a breath of fresh air. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With the banishment of the murderous entity, the other spirits were free to move into the light. The ghosts are gone, and that kind of makes you feel good as a parent to be like, you know what, we felt like we have really done something here to get rid of this hell that we had been going through. It felt like we had our home back. Reliving a past tragedy that has bound multiple spirits to your home can be a horrifying experience. But when the human spirits try to defend the living against something much darker, the results can be overwhelming. Paranormal Survivors 3, Angela and Sid's Haunting. Interview with Angela, take one. We moved in 2012. We were all excited. There was schools nearby, I work nearby. Everything was really close. And then the, the place itself was huge. Wow, oh, Mom, this place is awesome. It was everything that we were looking for. Remember, the big bedroom's ours. This house uh, was in a beautiful neighborhood, um, very quiet. I was really uneasy and uncomfortable. I felt like it was haunted right from the beginning. But I was trying to be happy and trying to put on a brave face for the family. For the first few weeks, Angela was able to keep her anxiety in check. From the very beginning, when I was walking down the stairs, I felt like there was somebody behind me trying to push me down the stairs. My wife was very freaked out, and she was pregnant at the time. And then when I got to the bottom of the stairs and I looked back around, I saw her. She was dressed in Victorian-style clothes, and she had her hair up in a Victorian-style bun. She didn't look like from our time frame at all. She was walking down the stairs, and then like a hand came out and kind of pushed and I watched her tumble down the stairs, and I saw her neck break. That scared the crap out of me. And I was like, what is going on? I felt like she lived there and, and died there, and that that was her home. That wasn't the only apparition Angela would see around the house. There was one that would come to the front door. It was like a soldier from World War I. It was like he was trying to come home after, after the war. He was constantly jiggling the handle and trying to open the door. It was too scary. It's not uncommon for a house to be haunted by more than one entity. Once one entity gets in, it's actually easier for other entities to come into the property. 
It wasn't long before Angela's son William had a terrifying experience of his own. He was home alone one day and he was taking a shower. He said he saw hands pressing in on the shower curtain toward him. He felt like it was something mean, something evil. He freaked out, ripped open the curtains to try to fight whatever was there, and there was nothing there. I've never seen him, William that scared before. I think it still affects him to this day. I was a little bit worried. Uh, I knew about the woman, um, the, the old Victorian woman, going up and down the stairs. Or was there something else in the house I didn't know about? Usually, if it is a, uh, a big event that happened, causing a fire, multiple deaths, multiple casualties, it's going to cause more than one entity. It can be multiple events. It can be multiple times. It can be different centuries. If a vortice is, is there, that's where the spirits are going to go. Soon after, Angela encountered the same entity that terrified her son. Going into the basement, it was so unbelievably cold, like not just normal basement cold, it was like walking into a freezer. I could like see my breath like it was a winter's day. I would feel like somebody was breathing in the back of my neck and it didn't feel like a person. It felt animal-like. It was very, very scary. I felt this overwhelming fear in the pit of my stomach that is indescribable. And when I turned around, I saw a shadowy figure standing in the corner. <coughs> and it started to grow and get bigger. It felt like it filled up the whole room. I felt like maybe it was demonic. It was so creepy and scary. And I just ran upstairs and I was crying and I was upset. Dad! Ben! Ben! There's something down there. And I tried to comfort her. You know, what's wrong, honey? Relax, what's going on? Talk to me. And she was crying. She was absolutely scared out of her mind. And I thought our family was in danger after that. After I had Colin, the Victorian lady would follow Colin wherever he was, whichever room that I laid the baby down for a nap. She would stay there with him. The family was frightened by the multiple entities in the house. But after her second son, Colin, was born, the spirit of the Victorian woman became a welcome guardian. It felt like she was trying to protect him from something. <laughs> She was maybe a month, maybe two months old. But she wasn't strong enough to keep the demonic presence from the baby. I had laid him down for a nap and we were downstairs. Guardian spirit who was keeping Angela and Sydney's baby safe was losing the fight against the dominant malevolent spirit. And then all of a sudden, we heard this loud bang. Shh, what was that? We both looked at each other because it was coming from upstairs where Colin was, so we were scared. So I freaked out and I ran upstairs. and there was our son on the ground. Terror went through my heart. We picked him up right away. We were so scared. And we have no idea how he got out of the crib. I couldn't believe my eyes. You know, I told my wife, this is impossible. How can this be? As a mom, it's terrifying. We were in danger at that point, you know. If somebody can physically move our son, 
I knew we had something pretty serious. How can you keep them safe? How, how can you keep anybody safe if that's going on? Fearing for the safety of their baby, Angela and Sydney called in psychic medium, Gay Calhoun. I remember walking up to the house. The place had an odd, odd energy to it. My impression was, I want to leave. This is really almost overpowering. I walked through the house and I thought, there's something wrong on the stairs. There's a woman here who was murdered on the stairs. I was stunned. I was speechless. I was like, wow. I thought, well, okay, my wife is not crazy then. You know, she really is seeing this as well. It was a reality check. I knew that something was really there. Gay detected a powerful negative energy coming from downstairs. Whatever's in the basement, it almost owns this place. Gay thought that it was the spirit in the basement that would come up to frighten us. She knew something was in the basement, and she knew it wasn't nice. The energy in the house didn't feel human. You could hear grunting and other animal sounds. It was not human. It was demonic. She agreed that we were all in danger. I had no idea what it was. And it made you weak in the knees, like you didn't want to face this. Leave this house. This is not your place. I found that to be hard to deal with, hard to get past, because it had a great deal of power, and it knew it. I was yelling to get out. Get out. I was terrified when I heard that. A father to heaven. Father to heaven. Hell will be thy name. I order you to go forever. At first, the cleanse appeared to have worked. It felt better for like a day or two, but then it felt like it came back, but way worse. Three days after we did the cleansing, I was sleeping, and I'd heard three very loud, very loud bangs, and it woke me up out of a dead sleep. As soon as I walked into the kitchen, I had this feeling throughout my whole body, and it was, you know, like fear, instant fear. All the drawers were open, the cupboards were open, the fridge was open, the faucets were turned on, and it was just absolute chaos. I was absolutely frightened. I froze. I couldn't believe my eyes. This can't be happening. Like, we had just done a cleansing on this place. What is going on here? I was scared. I felt like it was it was not going away. I, I felt like we needed to do something else. That's when we decided to call in the priest and have the house blessed by the priest as well. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He told us there was things in the house that he had to exercise to get them out. Yea, though I walk through the valley of tears, I will fear no evil. He knew that the evil entity was in the basement. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When we got down to the basement is really when it started to happen. Be gone, beast. When he was doing the blessing, there was a book that flew right behind him. Nope. 
I was scared when he was doing the exorcism. I didn't know if one of us were going to get harmed during this. Be gone, beast. Be gone. Be gone. Right at the end of the exorcism, it was just bang, and then everything stopped. And then you could feel this light come in the basement. It was beautiful. We moved out shortly after the blessing. I felt like my entire family was in danger the whole time we lived in there. Whatever's in the basement is not, it's not going to leave. 